We're going to start going back a long way, sort of 1500s, Tudors. Now, Emmy's just going to play some Tudor music whilst I talk to you. If you were a composer in the Tudor era, you had to toe the line. And it's amazing, when you listen to music from the Tudor era, you can tell which king or queen was on the throne. And composers had to change their style depending on the tastes of the king or queen. So someone like Talis, who you might have heard of, he sometimes writes really elaborate Latin music. That's when there's a, a monarch with Catholic taste on the throne. Then he might write some really, really simple music. English, one note per word, you can really hear the meaning of the words Protestant monarch. And it's fascinating. And they often had to hide their own opinions. Otherwise they could be in serious trouble. They disappear, they could lose their heads. Extraordinary linking of music and politics. We're going to jump forward even a long, long way now, straight away, right away into the 20th century. You may have heard of a composer called Shostakovich. Okay, we're going to hear some Shostakovich while I'm talking to you. In 1936, so just before the Second World War, the Russian dictator, Stalin, attended a performance of an opera by this composer called Shostakovich. It was called Lady Macbeth of Minsk. He didn't like this opera. And the next day, in the official papers of the Communist Party, an article appeared, and it described the opera as being a muddle, not music. A muddle, not music. This was really bad news for Shostakovich. Anyone who had praised the opera, and many of the artists that Shostakovich had worked with, were arrested. The opera wasn't performed again. Shostakovich had just written a symphony, his fourth symphony. That never got a premiere until much, much later when the world had moved on, when, when it was a much more tolerant society. This sort of thing he was criticised for. The state was saying, oh, the music, it's not accessible music. It's not tuneful enough. It's too clashy. <coughs> and it's not heroic enough. Shostakovich kind of wanted to stay in Russia, and so he started to toe the line. And the piece of music we're listening to now it's his next symphony, his fifth symphony, and actually it's much, much more lyrical and tuneful than a lot of his previous music. And he described it as an artist's response to just criticism. He's sort of saying, yes, I didn't write in the right sort of manner, but now I have. Did he write that himself? Was he forced to write it? But it's amazing how artists can be uh, so bullied almost by the state in some some situations. But fortunately, his life survived and was able to carry on his work as a composer.